Welcome, first of all, to the first episode of uh, Master Talk, um, brought to you by Master Mentors. And the only mentor that we could think of for the first episode, frankly, was uh, Mr. Kaidar Kapadia, because we think that uh, you're not just mentor material, you're much, much more than that. You're definitely you, you, master material. You're going to say this, you're going to say this to all of them. Now. <laughs> no, no, of course not. <laughs> there, uh, there's a reason we chose you first, that yeah. you have to be the first person to be here on Master Talk. On a, truly for us, you are a master when it comes to your genre. And not just that, I personally believe that even apart from your genre, apart from the whole fitness education bit, I think you still have, you could be a master for various genres in life. And I'll come to those questions also. But uh, before that, thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much for being a mentor on our platform, Master Mentors. Um, I've got, I think, the best reviews only from your course. And uh, it's been, add, been adding value to people uh, from the day one. And people have only been asking for more from you. So, which is why we are here today. And which is why perhaps we'll have more advanced classes with you in the future. All right. So, basically, a lot of mentor apps had uh, connected with you. I didn't know this mentoring was now a big thing. But now I know it's, it's, it's a big thing. There are these failed businessmen who want to tell everybody how to run a business suddenly. So the businesses pack up and then they uh, get onto YouTube and then they say, I retired as a CEO at 38. Who the hell retires at 38? And then they want to teach uh, the seven steps to become a millionaire, billionaire and all that rubbish. So uh, a lot of these uh, mentor apps actually approached me and uh, there was some, I, there was a, there was no reason as to why I would pick yours except for the fact that it felt right. And uh, you all probably uh, said the right things to me. Uh, because I remember uh, Arjun was, by the way, Arjun, who was our marketing head earlier, is now a proud K11 alumni. He marketed, he marketed the course so well that he fell for his own marketing. And then he became a student. He became a student of K11 and is now a very successful personal trainer. Uh, so as it is, he was always a big, big uh, gym nut. So... Uh, he also knew the product very well, which is why he could market it well. But uh, Arjun had replied on my behalf to quite a few of these uh, mentor apps. And the one thing that they wanted to know was about my initial struggles. And uh, that's what put me off. So right. be because th there is no initial struggle. It's just right. a high. There are no responsibilities. There are no expectations from you. And you just start off and you've got a great opportunity that somebody gave you, which is right up your alley. So luck, luck and luck. And then afterwards, enjoying your work so much. So there was no struggle. I don't remember the struggling bit. And in fact, uh, the struggling is now after the business reaches a particular scale. Uh, initially, you're not doing anything that you don't like doing. But once your business reaches a particular scale, you cannot just do what you like or right. not just do all the things that are nice and pleasant. You've got to do so many unpleasant things for your child, for your baby, for your company. Uh, and uh, just like children with K-11 being the fearsome 18, we are now 18 years old. Oh. So 18 year olds probably give their parents grief the most. So uh, that's exactly where we are. And add that, add the pandemic to the mix and we've got a We've got real struggle happening right now, not happening at the time that I started. Uh, at the time that I started, I was probably on, uh, uh, I didn't need recreational drugs. I was high on uh, doing something. Uh, I don't remember struggling at all. So you all, you all fortunately didn't bring that up. And it was all about, they talk about how to build a career on the fitness industry and and quite frankly, it's a two-way street. Uh, I said yes uh, because of the fact that if if somebody gives me a platform to talk about what makes a personal trainer, what what are the requirements, why should one choose to become a personal trainer? Uh, it's not a career for everyone. No career is a career for everyone, and uh, only the right people should come. And that kind of uh, makes people think that it cuts down on the. Uh, reach that I'm, I'm not trying to convince everybody to uh, join the courses at K11. I, really want to, I literally want to pick 
the right people. I'm not going to refuse anybody who enrolls, but at the same time, I would rather give them a heads up that are you coming in for the right reasons uh, into the fitness industry? And if I lose a few enrollments, I have I've actually given refunds to people because they, there's a principles address in my uh, course. And I say that I'm, I'm saying this a little late to you guys because you all have already enrolled, but this is what it takes to be a personal trainer. And if you've come in with any other expectations to become a personal trainer, then you can back out. And uh, there have been two instances where people have said that, uh, you know, after you know, uh, attending the principal's address, uh, I, I think I've chosen this career in a, in a, uh, impulsively and I don't think I'm made or cut out to be a personal trainer. And at that time, I've, we've stuck to our word and we've given the refunds back. Now, again, that doesn't seem very businesslike. Uh, uh, and, but it's, it, it, it is absolutely makes complete business sense to me because uh, when, you, when, when your students go out and they're alumni and they're building their careers, uh, every successful student is an endless supply of enrollments to us and every unsuccessful student stops many from joining. Uh, we, uh, we try and convince everybody, we try and retain. So if somebody wants a refund, we say, all right, we want to hold on to that uh, 82,000 specifically, which is the personal trainer course fees. And while holding on to that 82,000, we don't even realize whether we are losing 8 lakh 20, whether you're losing 8 crores, whether you're losing 80 crores, you will not know. Uh, yes. So giving refunds is something that I have never, ever bothered to struggle with. Person doesn't get value. Person doesn't. Person is not going to uh, enjoy his investment. Uh, it's not going to be a good investment for him. We give the money back, no questions asked. Uh, okay. because, because we are extremely concerned about uh, the future of this person because on the basis of the future of this person lies our entire marketing selling. We don't sell. Our students sell for us. So uh, the students become opinion leaders if they're successful and there are so many and then they just snap their fingers and say and that, that kind of that, that kind of selling who can do? I mean, you can't do that powerful selling. And yes. even if they even if they complain about price, because we are probably at about twice uh, uh, what other players in the segment are yes. at. And uh, when they talk about, but it's expensive, they say, you know, don't talk about budgeting, do whatever it takes, but you do this course, save up and do this course, uh, sell the home gold and do this course. That kind of strong, that kind of strong selling is what yes. I'm after. Sure. And just as this is sales, where every customer has to become your salesman, every single customer, that's the, that's the basic premise of our business. Absolutely. That your sales force are the customers out there that have used your services, benefited from them, continue to benefit from them. And uh, these are the people that are your sales force. And again, people who are not satisfied with your product, who think they've wasted their money on your product or services, are the anti-sales. And uh, we want to minimize, eliminate the anti-sales. We want to have that huge sales force out there. Every student going out, every student becoming successful, becomes a billboard, a hoarding for K-11, spelling out success for people who want careers in the fitness industry. So, Absolutely. I think yeah, yeah, perfect. That, that's just the right way. I think uh, all businesses should follow the same kind of philosophy. Because if your customers speak for you, I think that's all you need. That's all and uh, very frankly speaking, uh, when we were considering having a masterclass on personal training and this entire uh, genre, and when we did our research, so truly, I mean, your name and uh, your uh, organization's name was right up there. And it was because of these reasons that you're talking about. So it's not about what we just read on the internet or what we spoke to certain people about. We also spoke to your ex-students, uh, people who passed out, uh, people what they think about K11 and what they think about your philosophy of uh, training, what you know, what they think about the way you teach. We spoke to a couple of people, and uh, so you're right when you say that, that we, you know, we got a thumbs up from perhaps everybody out there, and that's why we said if there's somebody who's going to do this uh, masterclass with us, it's going to be. Uh, Kaizan Kapati and nobody else. <laughs> Thank you. So, so great. So, my, you know, there's one thing, there's one question which is really been inside me uh, and I've been wanting to know because I'm a fitness, uh, you know, uh, enthusiast myself. 
and I know what we all went through during the pandemic. So as a customer, as a client, as a fitness enthusiast, I was first just taken aback that how do I continue with my workouts? You know, how do I suddenly shift to home workouts? X, Y, Z. Um, I spoke to my trainers and they were in a tizzy as in what do we do? Suddenly the gyms are shut. We don't know when things are opening. Uh, gym owners were in a frenzy that, you know, suddenly it's all shut. And maybe this is the last place that is going to be allowed to be open because, you know, the spread of the, uh, the virus is perhaps you know, more probable inside a gym interior is what the common notion was at that time. So uh, there was all of this frenzy behind this entire industry and this entire fitness uh, regime. People started walking out, people started uh, jogging, people started doing their home-based workouts and, you know, different forms of workouts. But what I really uh, was fascinated about uh, when I learned about K11 and uh, by, when I was following your posts, which I do regularly, is that you all not only seamlessly, uh, you know, went through the pandemic and the lockdowns and everything, while others were actually thinking of shutting down their businesses and, you know, having uh, problems with the businesses, you all actually pivoted and opened K11 School of Yoga. And uh, you all have, uh, what I've seen is you all have uh, digitized the whole process beautifully. So that is something which not only the people in this industry would want to know from you, that how did you do that? I think any common business owner would want to know that as a businessman also, how do you seamlessly digitize the whole process and how has it come out so beautifully, I would say? Right. So um, uh, the impact of the pandemic on the fitness industry, first of all, uh, if you talk about that, or I'll talk about that a little later when the, when the pandemic hit, how do we manage to do things seamlessly? There are a couple of philosophical reasons for it. Uh, there are businessmen and then there is a person like me who is who has become a businessman out of not out of wanting to be a businessman. Uh, I'm the kind of person who has all his eggs in one basket, always has. I don't have uh, plan B's because I, not even because having a plan B is a bad idea. I just don't have a plan B. I don't know how to put it that way. So it's not a strategy to not have a plan B. I just don't have a plan B. So uh, the businesses that shut down very soon probably are the businesses where a businessman says, Abhi isme kuch nahi rakha, kuch aur karte hai. And for them, for them, some other business uh, is something that they can do. I am not that kind of a businessman who can who understands business to such an extent that I can do any business. Like, uh, uh, agar ye nahi ho hai, to, uh, chalo, real estate mein hai, uh, <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. those are the kind of people that shut down very fast because obviously they don't have the, the motive to stick around. The motive was always money. So agar paisa nahi ban rahe, ya paise banne ke liye, agar kuch sochna padega, to kuch aur kar lete hai. Maybe shift to lockdown hai, to koi online business hona chahiye, to shift to an online business. I love, uh, though I'm not uh, known to be a tech savvy person, I love technology, uh, always have. And uh, uh, the extent to which my own people think I'm tech challenged, uh, they'll stand behind me and actually say, now press enter. They actually tell you these things like, uh, or they'll, they'll, they'll interfere. And before I can do something, they'll be doing something on the keyboard. And I say, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I have this reputation of being tech challenged and, uh, the exact opposite is the CEO of K11, which is, uh, Kalyani. And, uh, by the way, she was supposed to be here, but she's right now, uh, biking somewhere she's on a tra on a off road wow. biking training which she's taken extremely seriously so sunday she's on the bike so anyway she's the one who uh, actually looks into the automation of the uh, of the company and uh, the technology then we've got uh, uh, fez uh, fez Sheikh is our it head and uh, Kalyani, along with him, make a quite a deadly team in terms of coming up with solutions. My job is to uh, ensure that the message is loud and clear, that this is the way we teach. And then the technology has to serve that, not we change the way we teach as per the technology. Right. Mm -hmm. So we become extremely rigid. Abhi tum technological solution dhundo. 
So uh, a couple of things which I would like to state, and we had actually invested. Luckily, we are Kalyani always is slightly ahead of the curve. Uh, so in times when we had uh, good budgets, we kept on investing in technology that. We didn't even know what will come in the future or what will come in the future. But we had these wonderful cameras now. If you saw, I showed you your screen, then I, the thing pan back. So we don't teach through laptop cameras. Uh, that's not how we teach. Right. And we've got these cameras that actually uh, pan and zoom. Uh, to, uh, the, and and we, we use technology in the way I feel technology should be used. In the sense, share screen. is a great technology that is there but since we are classroom teachers we don't share screen we still use the whiteboard but we have this great camera that can zoom into the tiniest of handwriting of teachers right. and the student at at the uh, at the, at home actually is getting a better view of the whiteboard the real whiteboard not the zoom whiteboard the real whiteboard than the student sitting in the classroom right See, we never wanted to move away from brick and mortar. We, uh, I'll tell you a funny thing that happened when we moved, as you said, seamlessly. And uh, uh, I, I can't thank my lucky stars that it happened seamlessly. Uh, there, there is talent uh, in my team. I, I was just the way I say, "Sikha na hai aur kuch nahi." So I'm rigid on my way of doing things. And technology has to serve you. You can't be subservient to technology. Technology as a service is all I know about uh, the interfacing of mankind with technology. Uh, even when it comes to softwares, I I hate it when they tell a customer, "Sorry, we can't do this because our software cannot process this particular." Okay. Uh, it's not done. You you see to it that the software is there to assist you and not become your master. So after and and quite frankly, I don't even have to put my foot down. The values of K11 are known by the entire team. they know that we are not going to get into e learning and i keep on talking about k11 values everywhere i get a chance uh not to boast but to kind of put pressure on myself to never waver ab itna baat kar liya na ab hi hat nahi sakte na bol dega yeah. hum to aise hi karte hain hum to aise hi karte hain ekdam mark you just announce it and by announcing it you cannot back down now you've announced it to the world that this is how we do things so uh after we got the online if you see i mean whenever you read a post of mine i will never say k11 is now online i will say k11 is using an online technology for a live two way interactive video conferencing uh, attend class from home situation ye itne sab shabd ka zarurat hai because people misunderstand we are not online educators we are brick and mortar face to face teachers we cannot teach without seeing our students we don't give recordings of our lectures uh, as a way of you know so some of every lectures recorded for uh, audit purposes for uh, quality purposes uh, we're constantly listening in on our teachers when they teach our students uh, so that kind of uh, watching is extremely important that kind of keeping a watch is extremely important and since we have this entire uh, recordings of the lectures there have been instances where students have prospects have said i'm ready to pay but uh, uh, why don't you just give me all the recordings <laughs> all right i i'll watch it at my own convenience and uh, the the reason why we refuse is because as it is ghar pe distractions hai when it is live you can ask questions you can ask your doubts and we notice students more easily on the screen than we used to notice them in the classroom so we will immediately kind of tell the person ke bhaiya i know that your house people will keep on talking to you but please explain to them that you are at home but you're not really at home you're in my classroom uh then you have students who will literally while i am lecturing become like this you know that's how they become <laughs> i've seen students this yeah. people are lecturing this mm-hmm. so then to teach them a lesson then what i do is i also become like this when i do something like this i said yeah chalega kya like that huh like uh-huh. if i teach you like that and if i'm standing in the classroom teaching you why the hell are you lying down there 
So we pick up. This is how it is in a K11 online class. So, by uh, the mod, we have moderate. We created a new job profile, and uh, we've got professional moderators uh, in every class. When I say professional, what I mean by that is they go through special training of being a, uh, a Zoom video conference online uh, live classroom moderators. There are students that have problems with network. There are students that, uh, you know, uh, uh, suddenly disappear. The moderator calls them, Kidare bhai, tu hai ke nahi hai? Okay. Or video on kar. You, there's a constant coordination going on. Uh, if, uh, and uh, this, is, this is all something that has evolved over a period of time. Right. Okay. Uh, constant evolution happening at a very rapid pace uh, based on requirement. There is no brainstorming that happens there is no something like uh, can we, how can we make things better how can we make things better a class mein koi dikkat ho gai, a class where something went wrong and uh, the lecturer says yeah i didn't have anybody all right, all right we need somebody there we need a moderator uh, see that's how things happen right and they keep on perfecting and uh, evolving now uh, as it is paying attention while sitting at home people really think that we can't see them somehow even though it's video conferencing. Right. So we keep on snapping our fingers and saying, Bhai, main phone liya hai. I've also got hajar calls. Ko bhi aate. Main phone le rahun, main sikha rahun. Please get off the phone. Please pay attention. You've paid money and we are more concerned about your investment than you are. Pay attention. Right? So sometimes this will happen. I'm teaching and let's say I'm the student and I'm listening to the lecture like this. Suddenly you'll see this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have to like oh my stuff and the best part is that uh, uh, earlier when we used to have a class of 35-40 students uh, we didn't really like it but we had no choice we can't remember so many names immediately uh, you know as teachers so right. you there in the red t-shirt uh, or you there in the you know that's how we would call out and then probably ask their name and try and retain the name of the student but with the video conferencing, what's happened is the names are right there. So I have to say, Suraj, please pay attention. I don't say, uh, you know, you in the black shirt with the M. Uh, right. So I, I can directly take, directly take your name and call out to you and pay attention. This brings me to a very interesting uh, observation then. So what I'm understanding that it's a hybrid model now. Even if people are not in your classroom physically, they are there online, but it's live. So that the flavor of live education is not uh, out of it. Your quality of education remains the same. Yeah. So even someone from, let's say, sitting in Northeast can join your class now, which otherwise they perhaps couldn't when it was only the offline mode. Right. So uh, my question is, in some way, do you think this has been beneficial for you and to your potential students and to people who may be wanting to be learning from you? I, I uh, Is there a silver lining somewhere? I, silver lining would be the right thing to say. But I quite frankly, I, I mean, I've been meeting other businessmen and um, I don't like the way they're looking at things uh, as far as the pandemic is concerned. I, I can't, I, I'm feeling very uh, unlucky that this happened in my lifetime, this whole thing, where uh, people actually started talking about a new normal where they were okay with the social distancing, where, uh, you know, I'm not coming to your house. I don't know. Friends becoming weird, family members becoming weird, uh, them not going to the hospital when somebody's sick because they are worried about the infection. I don't know. I mean, it's there's some uh, a major undercurrent of discomfort, uh, the constant wearing of masks everywhere. I have to wear. I wear my mask everywhere I go. But you know, just looking at people cycling wearing the masks, fine. They're being responsible and all that. But suddenly we've been like. I mean, what world are we? I mean, it's, it's strange sometimes, uh, and people accepting a new normal so fast is something that I, 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 I struggle with. And uh, sometimes a businessman will, I'm, I'm with a businessman, he say, "Arey, the pandemic has been super beneficial for us. Arey, our side. I, how are you saying that? There are people who've lost their jobs. There are people who've committed suicides because they." They became jobless. Unemployment is on the rise. Uh, crime always goes up with unemployment. And right. and if it happened, then why are you announcing that 
ये पैंडेमिक एंड ऑल दीज पीपल हु आर से पैंडेमिक से बहुत फायदा हुआ है Hmm. to realize that if their business is based on lockdowns, भाई lockdowns भी खत्म होते हैं ना of course, of course. तो तुम्हारा बिजनेस नहीं नाश करने वाला अगर इफ दिस इज द बेसिस ऑफ योर बिजनेस लॉकडाउन में मेरा डिलीवरी बहुत गया है लॉकडाउन में इसका बहुत फायदा हो गया ना जोमैटो एंड स्विगी एंड जूम फॉर दैट मैटर दे डिजर्व देर हायर uh profits or income because they were always there in this business they didn't choose this business saying that oh right. the lockdowns are going to happen and we'll benefit from it they scaled up i mean they were already they were already online right, right? and uh, uh, especially this company zoom is something that i think is uh, misunderstood by people right i mean 500% increase in customer base they really benefited bloody hell they had a he gas product how how are that Absolutely. and there were so many i mean we were constantly skyping for skype to disappear and for zoom to bloody take over why uh, skype was there uh, all your 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 other webex uh, the so many others and we we've conducted about close to uh, uh, i think about 3000 4000 classes lectures uh, on zoom So absolutely without any problems. Of course, fair sees to it. Sorry, nine thousand lectures is what my team is telling me right now. Nine thousand lectures, and uh, we don't remember a single lecture being cancelled because of a glitch in Zoom. Never. Nine thousand. Yeah, yeah, yes. Nine thousand lectures, and I also remember uh, uh, one student that I was saying about brand values. Uh, first of all, let me not call it brand values. Let me call it company values. because uh, who am i to call my company a brand that's for other people to judge whether it's a brand or not so when it comes to values it's about what things you will never do like a uh, kelevin will never do this kelevin will never do that it's not about things that we do so uh, if kelevin were to be considered a brand by people and uh, they were to give that kind of status to our logo that that's a brand then uh, it's not because of the things we do it's because of the things that we have shut the doors on no option to make it now yes it seems to be a solution but it's not because a solution that is against our values is not a solution and hence not to be taken so i guess uh, there was a boy on one of my posts when i finally declared that we teaching this way through zoom a uh, instagram post pe one boy said uh, ke Kazat sir, I remember very clearly in one of your lectures, you have said that online to K11 will never go. Do that. And now you are talking about online. So then right. I then clarified that, brother, my post was done first, and I am glad that you are holding me accountable. I mean, you have listened to my lecture with attention, and you have, if I have wavered from my values, then you have every right, and in fact, you are doing something right by calling me out and saying that, boss, explain. uh how do you know online is good for you so then i wrote a big long as it is i write long things only pura big long uh, chapter i wrote on uh, on how uh, we are using an online medium we are not online e learning educators right hamara ek tarfa nahi hai we are not one way we are two way live educators we stand in our classrooms and teach we are not sitting at home uh, when we had to work from home suraj uh, the things we've done to create that uh, i've got an apartment in pune that's been converted into classrooms when the right. lockdown was severe uh, we moved the whiteboard in that house we've created a classroom uh, out of the hall uh, a living room space wow. so that uh, and i swear to you when uh, the student watches uh, the person taking that lecture from my residence uh, in pune uh, there's no way he'll know that the person is not in the k11 school we did branding inside we did all that logos everything whiteboard skeleton everything that the person requires uh, whenever we've we've worked from home we have we have been in our uniforms uh, we've stood there are people who did not have set up so pehle pehle before we could start sending set ups to people's houses they would take a stool a high stool and put their laptops so that they could stand and teach because we don't sit and teach 
we always stand in the middle. It's part of our uh, our uh, teaching philosophy is we stand and deliver. Uh, and uh, uh, these things actually is what has made people like you, who yourselves uh, have a great team, yourselves are doing something unique in your space. And uh, uh, I see the dedication that your team also has. Uh, your team speaks very highly of you. They like working for you. They seem to be having a good time working for your firm. And that tells me a lot about a company. So uh, again, so people like you, when you all appreciate oh, how beautifully and seamlessly, well, we've not diluted any values. Dilution is something I hate. Compromise is something I hate. I'm not, I, I would rather shut things down. And right. I, quite frankly, uh, not that I've spoken about it much, but uh, if this solution were not to be that great, where my teachers were not to give me that feedback that they were all very uh, wary of this while getting on to and all that. And then I started getting this feedback from the teachers that it's more intimate. We are able to recognize their names. We love it that we're calling out them by their names. And so basically, if we are in a, we are in a K-11 classroom, the guy sitting in the last row, uh, he might get distracted or might be scribbling something and I might not be able to see him or my eye might not catch him. Right. But you're on a 2D spread uh, with everybody. We can call out. Uh, so, and, and the clothes, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> so initially we had these uh, irky moments where it was irritating because we found a guy attending our lecture while walking his dog in the garden. That was one. Then we found a uh, lecture. There was a, there was a lady uh, who was attending my lecture while cooking. So she was, I could see her cooking. <laughs> she was looking at my uh, lecture and nodding like that. Then uh, there was, uh, 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 oh, the worst ones, the, the absolutely dead scary ones was, okay, now you guess what this is, all right? My lecture is going on on the device. Okay. And look at this. The guy's driving. He's driving and attending my lecture. <laughs> so we have to, we have to, you know, come down heavily on that. That it is attend class from home, not right. attend class from anywhere while doing anything. Uh, don't, don't misunderstand. And other office may better, the office may better, a location, to ghumte mat firo. Device ke saath, because it's distracting to teach when somebody's moving around, you know, and then things like Suraj, uh, 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 oh, change karo. We tell them landscape mode mein chahiye, tum phone pe ho. and sometimes the students will, uh, will you know, uh, say, Sir, what is landscape mode? Well, I have a lot of driver janta landscape mode, mera dhobi janta landscape mode, bete picture dikte landscape mode mein. to picture dikta, video dikta So this is, these, these are the, the things that make it worthwhile. A little bit of from the, from the term, uh, from the student's uh, point of view, uh, where he is wanting to go and learn from a K-11, and maybe he's from a remote location in India and maybe he saves all the costs of coming down to another city, staying there, etc. which he had to. And now because of the pandemic, as un unfortunate as it was, and like you rightly said, it came with a lot of uh, problems that we are facing. But uh, maybe some things by habits have just changed, uh, which otherwise maybe would have taken a decade to change. Maybe from even ordering grocery online. Uh, to meals online, which people are now starting to see that maybe they have their own benefit, maybe they are fresher by order, by, by ordering them, or uh, consuming education even online. So um, I'm sure because you know you have a particular classroom which maybe takes 100 people or you know, 50 people or so on and so forth. But maybe there are you know a thousand people who want to learn from uh, you know Mr. Kaidar Kapadia himself. So in this case, with the whole online situation, whenever they're sitting in India, now that you have a live online class. So I would call it a class itself. It's just that it's live right now, uh, like you rightly said. So it's not a, a pre-recorded thing, which is brilliant, which is the way it should be actually. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll actually one, Also the way a lot of colleges are going these days and they are making uh, mandates to have an online version also. There was online a online version also. 
there was a do you think that that is actually much more beneficial for a lot of students uh, this kind of a uh, uh, flexibility obviously it's going to be for a lot of students who could not relocate suraj uh, about 3 uh, 4 years back uh, i realized that my uh, my small vocational schools of fitness science is something so niche right uh, 50% of our students relocate for our schools they relocate exactly yeah. I, i was i was shocked with that number yes so we had schools we have schools in mumbai pune uh, ahmedabad delhi calcutta uh, uh, and uh, guwahati now and soon to be in a few more places which i'll explain how we are doing it in these loss making times and yes right. we have suffered losses uh, we are brick and mortar every brick and mortar establishment suffers losses yes. and uh, there was a brief moment uh, in the initial phases of the lockdowns when i said that i am the only uh, person who has thought of brick and mortar schools for fitness sciences uh, of course there are online education for everything but fitness sciences is largely online and brick and mortar to kiske paas nahi hai if they use brick and mortar what they do is they will teach the theory in the aerobic studio of some commercial gym and they will take the pra- practicals on the gym floor of a commercial gym probably with a smattering of a few members music right. going, music going on it's an i watch so, so uh, from the very beginning it was like if i am doing this then we need a school we need a lab we need a classroom of course our, our lab because it's fitness sciences unlike a chemistry lab that's going to have beakers and round bottom flasks and test tubes uh, and burners our lab has got gym equipment and there are a few one or two in a year that will walk in and say humko gym membership chahiye and then we explain yahan pe gym membership ye gym nahi hai ye school hai aur jis jo gyms mein aap jate ho wahan pe jo aapko sikhata hai wo hamare sath courses karta hai so that that gym floor that you're seeing is is a lab where practicals happen like how in a school uh, you have lectures of chemistry and then you go into a chemistry lab you have lectures in the classroom for physics and then you go to the physics lab and the same thing for biology a lecture in the classroom and then uh, a lab for the practicals similarly we are into education we need a classroom for theory and we need a lab for the practical application of that theory so uh, uh, at one point in time because it's fitness sciences and it's not some computer it which everybody requires there are very few people uh, from the the percentage point of view so if i was in uh, the aviation sector i'm talking about non pandemic times of course aviation is now uh, in a very very uh, troubled state because of the pandemics right. but uh, a lot of people want to become persers and flight attendants or definitely a lot more people want to become persers and flight attendants and people want to become persers uh, and in nit uh, i can't compare my turn to an nit the number of people wanting computer education and the number of people wanting fitness science education cannot be compared so right. but we reached a, a surprising scale and i started questioning myself that uh, uh, was it wise in in investing in such heavy infrastructure uh, brick and mortar schools thoda hua wo doubt hua and then we started getting these messages from uh, girls and boys everywhere that Oh, thank God! I've been waiting for this, and I just couldn't have done a K11 course. Yes. And then again, I had to hear that irritating thing, which doesn't sit well in my brain. They said, "Thank God for the pandemic! I could do the K11 course." Said, please, please, please don't say that. It's it's not something that that is that is nice to say. Uh, and uh, during during that time, where these guys were reaching out, trust me, Suraj, the number of students who said that. I'm God. You're finally online, uh, and I can I can I can attend your classes from home. Yes, For every every one of those students, we had a student living in another town saying, "Ki wo thik hai online ka, main lockdown ke baad hi I want to sit in the classroom." Yeah, and that made me kind of feel that all right, both are required. Both yes. are bloody required. Uh, it can't be just one. and uh, yes the pandemic forced us to uh, kind of uh, evolve and we had the talent uh, that made it happen 
uh, and uh, and and it's it is going to be something that's going to increase our reach. Right. But uh, I'll tell you one more thing, Suraj. The personal trainer course is not completely attend class from home. In the personal trainer course, what has happened is so there is four months of the lecturing module, the uh, four months of theory. The four months of theory that happen in our classrooms, you can attend from home. But wherever you are, mm -hmm. for practicals, you have to come to our labs. Yes, which is fair. Which right. Is fair. So now what has happened is that the relocation cost has yeah. reduced from relocation of six months to relocation of two months. And the nutrition course and the course that you do after the personal trainer course, which is a special populations course, those courses don't have a practical module uh, and hence can be 100% done from home. The, the yoga practical module is, is actually every lecture has a theory and a practical, every lecture. It's not like first the theory finishes, then the practicals. And the reason why we can't do remote uh, practicals is because who's going to have a lat pull down and a power cage and uh, uh, stuff at home? And how do we monitor five different people in five different locations uh, doing the movements. It's a little, uh, it, it, it's not possible. It, we'll be able to do it for people with home gyms. Uh, so uh, uh, the nutrition and the special populations can be 100% done on that. Right. Because they don't have that. And yoga for that matter only requires a yoga mat or if you have a clean floor, you don't even need that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, we 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 lower down our camera settings, and uh, the the instructor uh, teaches uh, uh, and uh, and he does the poses and the asanas and everything is done right there, and you can check everybody's form. So yoga practically also can be done remotely right. through the video conferencing. So even the yoga, but even then there are people who want to come to our schools and attend from class. And I'll tell you one disadvantage that is there from attend from home. Uh, it's all very good to say now people from everywhere. Are we, are we taking into account their uh, economic status? I mean, one thing's for sure. If they put their heart and soul into it and they are born to be personal trainers, uh, post the K-11 course, they're not going to remain poor. But we start out somewhere and there are our students living in, in, in very small homes 300 square feet homes, right. five, six individuals living in that 300 square feet. And right. uh, they they need, uh, you can't expect them to have noise cancellation, earphones and all that. Yes. Yes. And uh, the the brother wants to watch TV and yes. this guy says, yes. uh, right. uh, and there are fights at home, uh, right. not allowing them to sit for the lectures. Understood. Oh, Har cheese ka up and down hai. There's a pros and cons of everything. Absolutely. And now we will be moving on to the truly hybrid. The truly hybrid is, so you saw the screen. That's where I see my students. Yeah. Uh, thing. So uh, I don't know if uh, share, I mean, uh, uh, gallery view kar, because I want to show uh, Suraj how we teach. I've actually uh, hidden the podium for reasons, but I will be, you know, I'll be teaching from here. I'll be standing here at the podium and I'll be, I'll be instructing the class here. Now, when I stand here, of course, this coat of arms is being projected on my whiteboard right now. Uh, right? So, when I stand here and teach, this is what we call a truly hybrid. Truly hybrid means I've got my students sitting here in the class. So, there are students in the classroom. And the students, there are students of mine uh, attending class from home. And the same lecturer, same teacher is teaching the students in the classroom and the students attending from right. So the lecture is the same. We don't have online teachers and offline teachers. Uh, it is exactly the same. Right. And we want to create that same experience. So the people who cannot attend home from home. And believe me, Suraj, there are lower middle class students, lower middle class students who are saying that I am living in small town somewhere. Saying that we are coming, we are staying, we are having classrooms. They waited for the lockdowns to open up. They won't enroll 